The woman who really knew too much is how Stephanie Gibo has described herself. It's also the title of a book published last year by the former marketing manager of Swiss bank UBS. A book that's led to her being summoned to court to answer libel claims brought by its French subsidiary. It's the third time in six years that she's facing her former employer in the French courts. UBS filed a complaint against me in 2010 for libel, for daring to ask questions about illegal canvassing and tax evasions. I had to go on trial in 2010 and of course I was discharged. And then it was me who brought UBS before the Employee Claims Court for harassment, where I also won. In both cases there was no appeal. Charged with money laundering and tax fraud, the Swiss bank has had to pay bail of more than 1 billion euros. According to the ongoing investigation, UBS has concealed more than 12 billion euros from French tax authorities via offshore accounts. And yet it continues to hound its former employee. It's what I call organized mobbing or gang stalking. It's meant to make you crack. That's what they expect. It's because you're just a crumb in front of this super powerful multinational firm. It shows the impunity of those companies whose only rule is money. It all began in 2008 with a probe at the UBS France premises. Her boss asked her to destroy computer files containing the names of clients and account managers. She refused and then discovered her bank used Swiss account managers to unlawfully canvass French customers and held so-called milk books, parallel accounting covering tax evasion transactions. I threw myself into the lion's den. I went to see the legal affairs manager, the general manager, the president, the head of human resources. In fact, from the moment I refused the orders, everything was organized to go against me. Harassed, then cast aside, she was finally sacked in 2012. The 30,000 euros she was awarded only covered her legal fees. She now lives on basic social benefits with the youngest of her two children. Unable to pay the rent, they may soon have to leave their Paris apartment, as finding a new job has been impossible. Everyone turns their back on you. I've sent out more than a thousand CVs, but the only answers I've had is, lady, you're scary. Everything's swept away. Your career, your health, your money, your family. Why do you have to suffer so much and be so isolated when you tell the truth and you're fighting for the common good? The common good is also the reason Eileen Chubb has been fighting for 15 years in the United Kingdom, one of the few European countries to have a specific law to protect whistleblowers. A law which Eileen Chubb and thousands of British whistleblowers deem too lax against abusers. She also lost everything after exposing, with six of her colleagues, the atrocities she witnessed when she was employed in a care home run by Bupa, a multinational in the healthcare sector. We try to do it that way. And when people are working, We've seen people left lying in their own waste day after day, up to 18 hours, until their skin was gone. Um, pressure sores to the bone, people left without food and drink, deliberately, and deliberately left without painkillers. Yeah. We also saw people drugged on antipsychotic drugs, they weren't even prescribed, they were drugs that were stockpiled from dead people that weren't returned. Um, we saw people spat at, kicked, screamed at, their money was stolen, their jewellery was stolen. In every way that you can hurt a human being, I saw that happening. There were some arrests, but her former employer was not convicted. Eileen and her colleagues were harassed and fired. She never found work again. 
Although investigators upheld all accusations, it was not mentioned in the employment tribunal's verdict, and she refused the financial arrangement that was offered. She now lives on a few hundred pounds a month, her small wage as the head of Compassion in Care, the charity she founded to help whistleblowers and denounce abuses in the healthcare sector. She and many more are campaigning for a new law which can really punish abusive employers and more effectively protect people who reveal illegal practices. It's not just about whistleblowing, it's, it's about the victims of silence and the people that suffer and die because whistleblowers were ignored. The silence is the enemy that we fight. And if we can protect whistleblowers with a proper law and remember those who pay the price for silence are the victims of silence. And we can change it, we can change it all. Sentiments shared in Switzerland, where Yasmin Motajemi has embarked on a titanic battle. She's suing Nestle, the food industry giant, for harassment. Headhunted from the World Health Organization in 2000, she was the firm's food safety manager for a decade and addressed its shortcomings in food safety procedures. Lack of hygiene in factories, wrong dosages in some infant formulas, contamination of raw materials and inadequate product labeling. Examples, she says, were numerous and the company was often slow to respond. In denouncing these facts, I made enemies, and one of these people became my boss. He began to harass me. It not only creates a sense of guilt in you, but you wonder what's happening. Why is it from one day to the next you're no longer appreciated? literally from one day to the next. At the same time, it makes you invisible. It's like you don't exist anymore. And this feeling so painful that you no longer want to live. Gradually isolated, deprived of her team, discredited, and withdrawn from the organization chart, Yasmin Montajemi lived a nightmare for four years before being sacked. And then she suffered from severe depression. More than the compensation she claims, she wants explanations, and for those she holds accountable to be punished. There are many people who make agreements with their company, and then they turn the page and resume their lives. I don't blame them because they don't have the means. They're forced to find a deal because they don't have the resources, the skills or evidence, because you need to have evidence. I had the will and the evidence, and as I have the will, the evidence and the skills, not to go to court would be a crime.